hello. In this video, we are going to look at the radial part of the orbital wave function, and we're going to use the number n to be the principal quantum number. R is the distance in atomic units in terms of uh, bore length, which is 52.9 picometers. Z is the nuclear charge. And then we have this uh, variable rho, which is 2ZR divided by n. In particular, we're going to look at two types of orbitals, the 1s orbital that we find in hydrogen, and then the 2p orbital that we see in carbon. So here we have the uh, values, expressions for just the radial part of their orbital wave function. Here we have the atomic 1s hydrogen orbital centered at minus 0 0.6 and plus 0 0.6. That's where the nuclei are. And we see in red the uh, sigma bonding combination uh, of those two uh, hydrogen 1s atomic orbitals. Here, again showing the uh, hydrogen 1s atomic orbitals, we also have now shown in red the antibonding combination for the two nuclei that are centered at 0 0.6 and plus 0 0.6. A convenient way to think about bonding is in terms of the probability densities for the electrons. So here we have the probability densities in dark blue and light blue for the hydrogen 1s uh, orbitals, the radial parts at least. And we see the probability density for the linear combination of those two, the sigma bonding combination. And we note that we have a large increase in the electron density between the two nuclei, minus 0 0.6 and plus 0 0.6, and that has the effect of stabilizing the molecule. So now we again have the probability densities for the hydrogen 1s atomic orbital, but we have the probability density for the antibonding combination. So the antibonding combination is shown in red. And we see a very uh, big drop in the electron density between nuclei. So therefore, this is going to destabilize the molecular system. So now we look at the overlap between a hydrogen 1s atomic orbital and a carbon 2p shown on the right. And the linear combination, that is the sigma bonding combination, is shown in red. So we see an increase in the wave function between the two nuclei when we have this uh, sigma bonding combination. So here we have the same two atomic orbitals, but now we're taking the uh, linear combination uh, that is the antibonding combination, and that is shown in red. And we see that we have the wave function drops to zero. We actually have an, a node in the molecular orbital at the origin here, since we have the antibonding combination. So now we look in terms of the probability density for the 1s hydrogen orbital shown in blue, the carbon 2p shown in green, and then we see the probability density in red for the uh, sigma bonding combination between those two atomic orbitals, and we see that we have a 
substantial increase in the electron density between the nuclei, giving us a stabilizing sigma bonding combination. So again, we can think about the stability of a molecular orbital in terms of the electron density. So here we have in blue and green, the atomic orbitals, 1s and 2p for hydrogen and carbon. And we see that the um, linear combination, that is the antibonding combination is shown in red. And we see that we have a very big decrease in electron density. In fact, we even have a node between the two nuclei. Therefore, this antibonding combination will destabilize the system. So then our uh, final combination is to look at the sigma bonding combination between uh, 2p orbitals on two um, neighboring carbon atoms. So this is the equivalent of the like PX with PX along the axis to make the bonding combination, which is shown in red. Here we now have the uh, atomic orbitals are shown in blue and green, and the antibonding uh, sigma combination is shown in red for uh, 2p orbitals on carbon atoms that are centered at minus 1.5 and plus 1.5. So here we plot the uh, electron densities for the atomic orbitals, which are in blue and green, a little hard to see. And the combination for the sigma bonding combination is shown in red. And we can see that we do get an increase in electron density between the nuclei, giving us a bonding combination, which stabilizes the molecule. And for our final example here, we have the electron densities for the 2p orbitals on two different carbon atoms at minus 1.5 and plus 1.5. And shown in red, we have the electron density for the antibonding linear combination. And that is shown in red. It's a little hard to see, but we do see that we have a reduction in the electron density compared to the individual atomic orbitals. Therefore, this antibonding combination will destabilize the system. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, as always, have a good one.